Coming up on Gino's Legacy. We had this expectation for ourselves, literally, that we were going to win four national championships. After a couple <laughs> weeks of practice, then what? <laughs> <laughs> then I wanted to call my mother and go home. <laughs> a candid conversation between Coach Oriema and one of the greatest players to ever wear a UConn jersey. From unsure freshmen. I remember going into the weight room, and I remember pushing up just the bar. <laughs> And I threw it down. I'm like, uh-uh, Coach Martin, I got scoliosis in my back. <laughs> to confident basketball icon. Did you ever feel like people resent us for this? Absolutely. Really? Did I care? No, not really. Former UConn star Swin Cash shares some of the obstacles she's overcome. I don't like to say I have regrets, but you always want that moment back. On her way to becoming a champion in every sense of the word. When you had the tumor and everything, did it ever cross your mind, they're like, hey, my career might be over. I did, but I never wanted to be a quitter. This is Gino's Legacy. All righty. <laughs> Here we are. Swing cash. Flew in from where? Miami. Just for this? Yep. Just for you. Come on. Just for you. Yeah. No, just for another chance to be on television. Oh, that too. In the New York area. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. You're a legend everywhere you go. <laughs> Detroit, New York, Seattle. I've had, a, had a good career. Yeah. Make it play. But stores, I mean, like. It's different coming back here. Different coming back It's here. different coming back yeah. here. Yeah. I remember the first time we came up to visit you at your high school, <laughs> CD and I. No, no, no. You came before, before it was CD. I did. I came by myself. Yeah. You came yourself. You came in the gym. You were wearing all black. And everybody was like, and I didn't actually at the time know who you were. And I was just playing. Really? And I, I didn't know who you were. Really? You were sitting over in the corner. And I'm like, okay, there's a guy over in the corner. And people were kind of talking. My coach came over to me. And he was like, over there sitting watching you play was Coach Gino Oriyama. Just wanted, he can't speak to you because of rules or whatever. And I looked over and I just waved and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I think it really hit me whenever I signed to go to UConn and this kid came up with like a UConn sweater and was like, you know, can you sign this? And I was like, what? And yeah, you're like, yeah. wow, like this is, this is now big time right here. But I remember during the whole recruiting process, it was, it was a little bit weird. <laughs> So like, I don't crazy. think it was like a normal recruiting because um, we would sit around and talk in the office and we would say, man, like swing catch this and swing catch that. And she like tries to block every shot. She tries to get every rebound. She runs the floor. She's got this high energy and, and like incredible intensity, blah, 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 blah. So what's the problem? Why can't we ever talk to her? <laughs> Why can't we ever get in touch? With her? Like it wasn't normal, was it? No, it wasn't normal. Uh, there was a lot going on at the time. My high school coach, um, who was a very humble man, it just got overwhelming to him. And, you know, and at the time back then, it was really hard to talk to the players. And he was very protective of coaches really talking to me. Uh, and so he just kind of got to a point where he was like, uh, like, I'm not talking to anybody, which then I think kind of sent a message to you, you guys and other schools like, well, she's not interested. And I'm like, let me pick up the phone and just call. And I remember calling back and being like, hey, how are you guys doing? And they're like, where are you? <laughs> you basically <laughs> asked me, where do you come from? Like, what's going on? And you're right. Out of nowhere, you call up and we all looked at each other and we said, now what are we going to do? <laughs> and it was, um, it, it was pretty easy decision for us. How well did you guys know each other? That whole supposedly greatest recruiting <laughs> class in the history of recruiting with you, Tamika Williams, Asia Jones, Sue Bird, and then uh, Kirsten Walters. We didn't know each other. We knew of each other. Uh, and you had Kirsten and Sue who were looking at some of the same schools. You had Asia that may have been looking at some of the same schools. Tamika was over here, and I think she was at like Ohio State and other schools. And then there was me, and I was in this lane with the schools. And it really just started at AAU. Tamika, I remember her saying, like, we should just just all go to the same school. Like, that would be crazy. <laughs> like, who would do that? <laughs> In our minds, we were like, we all bring this different talent, and we're just coming to make a change. We had this expectation for ourselves, literally, that we were going to win four national championships. 
That's and then when works. practice started, after a couple <laughs> weeks of practice, then what? <laughs> <laughs> then I wanted to call my mother and go home. <laughs> I remember going into the weight room. And, you know, we got on campus. I was 145 pounds. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was athletic, but I wasn't, like, strong. I get into the weight room, and they're like, you see all these people in Shane. I'm like, huh, huh, like doing all these weights. And I remember pushing up just the bar. <laughs> and the bar is, like, going like this. <laughs> And I threw it down, and Coach Martin's like, what? What's going on? So I'm like, uh-uh, Coach Martin, I got scoliosis in my back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I got scoliosis. I can't, I can't lift this weight. It was anything to get away from what was happening. There isn't a, there isn't a meeting that we have <laughs> get together that somebody doesn't bring that story up. <laughs> and and <laughs> it gets funnier every time I hear it. You know what was interesting, though, is how did you end up starting and Asia and Tamika did not? I remember coming in and I remember realizing to myself, I was like, you know what? I'm not the best shooter. I'm not the best ball handler. I'm not doing these things. But the one thing that was instilled in me was like, I'm going to outwork anybody. So I need to always constantly be going, going hard, going hard. Um, and I remember you came to me and you brought me into the office and uh, you're like, do you know why you're starting? And I'm like, uh, no, you told me, you said, because you gave me too many reasons why I shouldn't be starting you. And I'm like, okay. You know, I was bringing a certain energy level and that's what I always tell kids is if you give coaches a reason to have to play, you can make as many mistakes as you want. I mean, you screamed at me for a thousand mistakes. Yeah. As a freshman, you don't know anything, but when you bring that high intensity level, you know, coaches have to play you. They have to figure out a way to get you on the floor. And so that's what's always in my mentality. Still to come on Gino's Legacy. At what point during that year did you know we were going to win the national championship? Remember when we went out to uh, we went out to California to start the season, uh -huh. your freshman year, and we were just killing people, and we were running up and down like crazy, scoring a hundred points every night, and we were playing like ten players, and everybody's going. What did that feel like? It was like going from over here thinking you were good to wow, we're really good. And we're so deep and thinking that we are getting that national championship like right from the start. Um, and it gives you this false sense of uh, that you're kind of invincible. To have that confidence in your whole team, uh, it was pretty special. But things took a turn for the worse. Like, was Sue getting hurt that big of a deal? How, how, how did everybody respond to that? I don't know how it affected the team, per se, as much, um, because Sue did bring a different element when she was on the floor. But I think just her, her ability to be that great teammate, mm -hmm. and you always wanted her, and you always had a, a comfort level when she was on the floor, right. when she played. She was always that steady hand, that steady voice. Even as a freshman, she just had a different swagger about her. Your heart was hurting for her. Yeah. And then after that, it was like, okay, here's another injury with somebody else. And then everything just started spiraling after that. Well, we went from Sue, who made sure everybody got the ball and everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. And then our backcourt was Shay and Sveta, <laughs> who <laughs> probably wouldn't pass you the salt at dinner. Because <laughs> they're always, you know, they want the ball all the time. So the whole dynamic of the team changed. I, I remember as we got closer to the tournament, I just said to myself, this, I, I was so, I was so distraught. I, I, I was just so angry at what had happened during the season that by the time that Iowa State game came along in Cincinnati, it was just... Yeah, I think everything just kind of came to a head there. I mean, it was literally like that for me, probably from a low point, like we couldn't go anywhere but up. Um, it was hard because you think about the seniors or whoever may graduate. Right. But we looked around and said, majority of this team is coming back. What are we going to do? At what point during that year did you know we were going to win the national championship? I don't know. There was just something about that team, I guess, all year. Like, we just had so much fun together. It, it would be yeah. from us winning games to joking in the locker room. I remember we were... Before we even entered the tournament, Stacy and Paige, I didn't know at the time, stole my teddy bear that I used to, to travel with us. 
every I game. I and I'm receiving like pictures of like the teddy bear hanging up from like the rafters. <laughs> that feeling that when we took that feeling we had off the court, when we put it onto the court, we really felt like no one could beat us. But we lost one game at home mm -hmm. that year. And then we went to Philadelphia, which is kind of funny because, you know, we're back in Pennsylvania and it's your first Final Four and you guys were what? <laughs> what, what was that feeling like? It, it, for me, it was special. because there's probably yeah. a lot of guys you know because it was us, Tennessee, Rutgers, Penn State. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of yeah, a lot of local things. Going a lot on. of local. There was so a lot of local stuff going on at the time when I was coming up, especially younger. Before you started recruiting me, everybody thought I was going to go to Penn State. Yeah. So now those questions start coming back up. Uh, but it was great just to be in Pennsylvania. I mean, we. I think all the players had so much family at that Final Four that uh, it just made it a real special time. That last game, I, I don't know that anybody <laughs> could have executed a backdoor better. I mean, was that unbelievable or what? <laughs> You know, I always joke because Tamika always brings it up and she says it was literally like um, we were in practice and running the clinic, like how we would, you know, do our drills. We were literally doing our drills and I would just remember back door after back door after back door. Yeah. And it was uh, it was beautiful to be in. But I mean, it was special to be in, but more beautiful to actually watch it afterwards. When Gino's legacy returns. The hardest thing was to hear you come in afterwards and give the speech you gave to us. And you pointed at Tamika, you pointed at Asia, you pointed at Sue, you pointed at me. And you said, it's your fault. Why didn't you guys take over the game? What did Diana Taurasi coming on board, what did that do for our team? She brought a little sauce, as we like to like to call it, a little spice. Um, you know, it was one of those things where if you didn't know Diana, you could probably couldn't stand Diana. But once you got to know her, you only wanted to play with her. It wasn't so much that she she was acting like she owned the place. She was really just being her. Oh, that's and, what I mean. And, you know, that's and it, I mean. it was uh, uh, the thing I think that helped us and helped me was the fact that I could think back to our freshman year when we came in That's right. and I'm like, okay, we need to figure out how we bring her in and not make her feel like she's out there on the island. Cause we need her. We need her to help us win too, because she's that good. That team, uh, our junior year, I think from top to bottom probably had the most, if we would have all stayed healthy, the most yeah. talented team I, I was a part of. Yeah, when year. people ask me, I, I say that's the best team ever. Mm -hmm. That team that year, that compilation of players stayed healthy. That was the best team ever. Yeah. And the same thing, you know, then we have injuries. Feta gets hurt. Shea. Then Shea gets hurt. Um, we go to the Final Four, and we're up <sighs> a bunch at halftime, and we lose. You know I hate talking about this, Rick. <laughs> Um, that, that was really tough. And I know people bring it up all the time. Oh, Diana was one for 11 and everything else. The hardest thing was to hear you come in afterwards and give the speech you gave to us. And you pointed at Tamika, you pointed at Asia, you pointed at Sue, you pointed at me. And you said, it's your fault. Why didn't you guys take over the game? She's a freshman. Not so much blaming us, but letting us know that like, it's your ship moving on to the next year. And that stuck with me all summer. We came back preseason for our senior year. We still were talking about that. It was like, it, it ain't happening again. That following September when we started, everybody surrounding our team, at least I did, at least our coaches, we knew something special was going to happen. And you guys knew it too. Mm -hmm. There was never even thought of losing. No. No. Not it even gonna, close. Wasn't going to happen. That team probably was the most selfless team that I've ever been a part of. And I say that because from top to bottom, collectively, we knew what the task was at hand. We talked about it. We made sure everybody was on board. If somebody went astray, we pulled them back in. If you were going to go out there, work for it. Work hard and everything else take care of itself. And it did. After your senior year, and we had that great year, you're All-American, you know, and uh, we have three players on the All-American team. And then you're looking forward to the draft. Yeah. yeah that couldn't have been a goal when you were a kid saying, I want to play in the WNBA. That didn't even exist. 
when mm. you were a kid? It just started coming around while we were at the end of our, our kind of high school career. And it's like, okay, now I'm in college. Now you can work towards having that opportunity. Then we go to the draft and it's like, wow, like I'm gonna be able to go make money somewhere and, and still play the game because back then it's like, where, what are players gonna do? Just go overseas or you go get right. a regular job. Right. Two titles? Two titles. Two titles. Mm -hmm. And all-star team? All-star team. And then um, Olympic team in 2000. 2004. 2004. You, Sue, and D. Mm -hmm. All on the Olympic team. Yep. In Athens. In Athens. And what was that like? <laughs> it was a great experience because for me, uh, Sue and D both had played USA basketball. I had never played USA basketball. Every summer I went home, I was working, I work out at home. Um, so I never did USA basketball. So to have that opportunity uh, come right after 2003, after our first championship in Detroit was pretty awesome. We just had a really good time. That was probably uh, the f most fun that we had had, I think, after, after being at UConn. Yeah, and then that idea of, yeah, we're gonna play on the Olympic team forever, the three of <laughs> us, then 2008's coming around and it's Beijing and you're not even not in there. the conversation. Yeah. Uh, and that was difficult for me. Um, and it was difficult because, you know, before that, in, in 2004, I tore my ACL. 2007, I had found the tumor on my kidney and had to have it removed. It was cancerous. 2008, um, I knew I needed to have back surgery, but I went to every tryout. And instead of maybe me saying to myself, you know what, let me take myself out of this pool because physically I'm not going to be able to compete and I'm not going to make the team to, you know what, I'm going to keep going to all the tryouts and maybe I'll make the team. Right. Um, I doubted myself even a little bit because I didn't know. I didn't know if it was possible. But the hardest thing was to get that phone call to say that you're not on the team. Yeah. Coming up. When you had the tumor and everything, did it ever cross your mind that like, hey, my career might be over. Did you ever say like, you know what? I don't need this anymore. I want to move on to something different. When you had the tumor and everything, did it ever cross your mind that like, hey, my career might be over or this could be it for me basketball wise with the injuries that, you know, all the stuff. Did you ever say like, you know what? I don't need this anymore. I want to um, move on to something different. I did, I did. I, I mean, and there were opportunities to move on to other things, but I never wanted to be a quitter. And I felt like, I felt like that'd be like giving up on myself. Like I feel, still felt like I had something left to give. I feel like I needed to come back in, in the play. And so I just, I knew it may take some time, but I just knew I was gonna work hard at it to get back. Uh, how's that for an athlete as, as they're questioning, when is the end? Mm -hmm. How much do I have left? Mm -hmm. It's difficult. The one thing you don't want to do, athletes always say, I don't want to go too soon because I don't want to have any regrets. Right. But I don't want to go too late and then feel like they just pushed me off to the side and I didn't really do it on my own terms. But getting to Seattle, did that kind of all of a sudden breathe new life into, into your career? It did. It did because I was in a happier place. I, I needed to leave Detroit because there were too many other things and bad things that were there for me. So I wanted to go, and when I got to Seattle, it was like a fresh start. And who else better to be in that fresh start with yeah. than Sue? Yeah. Like, you know, my college roommate, I know her, she knows me in and out. And when you have a point guard that knows your game, that can deliver the ball and put you in positions to be successful, my career was directly tied to having success with Sue. And I think that, that got you back in the mix yeah. for USA Basketball, too. It did, it did. Because then the... 2010 mm -hmm. World Championships come, and you know who's the coach now. <laughs> yeah, I got that tidbit of information. <laughs> you got that tidbit of information, and um, uh, was there ever any doubt that you would be on that team? I think going through what I did before, I, there's always a possibility. But I remember having a conversation with you, and you were just like, you know, I want to see you make the team, get back in the gym, do what you need to do. And that was the end of our conversation. When they do these things, like, I'm usually not in the room. Like, I'm in the room when they're talking about players. But then when it came to you, they look at me, and I look at them, and I said, uh, uh, this is where I want to step out of the room. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, you guys need to do what you need to do. And, and I left and I came back and I said, uh, so what's the deal? And they said, uh, we're going with Swin. And I'm like, of course. <laughs> 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 it was cool. It was really good. It was really good. Um, but London for me was amazing. We've got now Sue and Dee and you and Tina and Maya and Asia. And we got six of the 12 players that were UConn players. Um, did you ever feel like people resent us for this? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Um, did I care? No, not really. Mm. Um, we always used to say, and I, I think, I don't know if it was Dee said it or Sue said it, and was like, all right, well, tell somebody else, tell me somebody else that you should put in our place then. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, if they feel that way, that's fine, but this is what the committee picked, so we're going to be here, and it's not about UConn, it's about, you know, USA. And now, what are some of the things you're involved in that people would be surprised to hear? Um, one of the things, um, obviously, the biggest thing for me is, is my charity, Cash for Kids. Most proudest thing about my charity that I can say for me is that uh, for 10 years now, we've invested in, in the kids in the community um, that I live in, in Pittsburgh, that I play. Um, and we've never had anyone kind of on salary. From my mom, volunteers, and partnerships throughout uh, the country that we've made, we've been able to give most of our money, at least 90%, um, of our budget every year to our programming for the kids. So that's something that I'm really, really proud about. And now I'm doing commentating and, you know, call, calling games and doing uh, my own show that we do. We need to talk. So it's just, a, it's fun. Yeah, I heard yeah. about that. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but we I We have to get it. you on the show. When are you yeah. going to make time for me, you know? Hey, hey I'll fly in anytime. <laughs> whenever it's you down in New York, so maybe we'll get hey, you on the show sometime. anytime, that's anytime. Good. I'm available. You know, people ask me, they see you on TV or they see you on a cover, you know, TV Guide or whatever it was that one time, or, or <laughs> Jet, you know, in, you know, in, in Detroit, and I, and I said, "Oh, that's Schwinn." <laughs> Still, oh my goodness! After how many years, I am not a bike. People I know. ask me this all the time. They're like, "Sue used to always say, why 'Why don't you correct them?'" Dee's like, "Why don't you correct them? Why don't you correct them?" I'm like, "Just let them be." <laughs> Somebody called you that one time. I forget when it was. Somebody was saying, "Where I forget where we were." Yeah. I, I love that girl on your team, uh, Schwinn Cash or something like that. <laughs> so I said, yeah, I kind of like that. So I kept, <laughs> and I knew, I knew you hated it. I knew you hated it. But it's, uh, it, it's just great to see the things that, that you've done, that you're doing. Um, it's, it's something that we're proud of here at Thanks. UConn, that uh, people like you represent our program. It was a pleasure having you here. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.